Hello, everyone. We're back with our AutoLine exclusives. I'm Sean McElroy, and joining me today is Eric Falkgrim. He's the technology leader in vehicle design at Scania R&D. And first off, Eric, I want to thank you for joining me today. All right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, you know, today we're all here to talk about uh, solar panels. Uh, anyone that's watched our shows has heard us talk about solar panels before. But uh, Scania being a commercial vehicle manufacturer, it's kind of interesting to hear solar panels be talked about in that space. Uh, Eric, can you talk to us about what you guys are working on? Yeah, sure. So um, it's a pretty obvious idea, I guess. I mean, uh, solar panels have been used for, for trucks and boats and uh, camper vans for, for ages, but it's um, usually to power ancillaries or refriger refrigerators or similar things. So. Uh, but with the um, advent of electrification within commercial vehicles, you all of a sudden have, have the architecture to actually plug in the solar panels into the drivetrain. So that's the plan. So you guys have got these solar panels on the back of a big semi-trailer that you're testing out. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So it's a really big trailer. Uh, it's about 60 foot long. And uh, we've got a, a area of about 1,500 square feet of, of uh, solar panels uh, that we will be um, populating it with, uh, which gives us a really big area to, to actually um, harvest solar energy. And then the solar energy is then just being fed into a battery pack? Yeah, that's right. So, so the trailer actually has the solar panels, but it also has an energy storage of about 200 kilowatt hours. So the idea is that uh, if you uh, leave your trailer over the weekend and it's a very sunny weekend, like in the summer, um, then uh, you will be harvesting solar energy and uh, you can use it and be ready to go on Monday morning. And so uh, the battery packs themselves are actually on the trailer, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then how, how about the motors? Are you working with an e-axle on the trailer itself or is that uh, actually on the cab? It's, uh, it's actually on the um, tractor uh, part of the, the vehicle. So the trailer doesn't have any um, active uh, drivetrain on it. But uh, I mean, that would be an option. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more complex, but you could, I guess you could do that as well. And I'm wondering what sort of uh, benefits you guys have seen. I mean, obviously there's plenty of skeptics out there for solar panels and the amount of energy that you can generate, but uh, what sort of things have you guys seen? And I know you've done some pre-tests at least. Yeah, exactly. So actually it all started with uh, uh, looking at the lithium ion batteries and, and uh, thinking about where they were like 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, they were very expensive and they had a much lower energy density than they do today. And uh, so the thinking was that, okay, what if the same thing happens within the solar panels? So uh, where will we be in, in 10 years time, right? So uh, we actually made a pre-study where we did um, theoretical analysis of, of um, a vehicle like this, um, pure, purely theoretical, but uh, the results indicated a fuel saving of about five to 10%. And that's even just using Sweden and using uh, uh, solar panels available today. So. Uh, with research, uh, and also especially in, in more sunny countries, you could uh, even double or even quadruple the, the energy we're harvesting. And I, and I think I read that you calculated in Sweden that you guys could generate something like 14,000 kilowatt hours of uh, energy in a, in a full year with the, the panels. Right. Yeah. So, so um, the uh, analysis shows that uh, that's where we're at with the panels we have, which are available to, to uh, buy uh, today, right? So uh, in the future, when they become more efficient, uh, that number is going to go up. Um, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, and I, I, I think 14,000 kilowatt hours to some people maybe might not mean anything, or if it does mean something to them, it's like, oh, wow, that seems like a ton. I, I guess if you break it down uh, in an annual basis, uh, it, it might not be as much. But the thing that kind of strikes me is, just with some simple math, you know, if you had a 140 kilowatt hour battery pack, you could fill that thing up a hundred times to get to that amount. And, and that's just talking about in Sweden. If you were in, say, a sunnier area, you might be able to get more than that. I, I think that's quite significant. 
It is, yeah, exactly. And, and um, you know, looking at especially the future of, of solar panels uh, and more sunny countries, I think you, you will see a uh, significant uh, boost to the range, like the electrical range. But uh, then there are also other benefits, like um, if you're standing still over the weekend, uh, you don't have a transport mission for your vehicle, you could be harvesting solar energy and, and putting it back into the system. Um, the energy storage on board. I mean, if you scale this up to where you have thousands of vehicles, that will also actually help uh, balance the grid and, and cut, um, so shave the peaks of the power, um, power demand. You could have that uh, as a standby buffer, basically. So, uh, and when you get into those things, vehicle to grid functionalities, then, then you, all of a sudden you have a marketplace uh, where you can be uh, buying and selling power um, from the, to and from the grid, right? So, or from other users. So it, it becomes very um, interesting when, when you have this system. Yeah, so then at that point, I mean, it's not just beneficial for the vehicle itself and the driver, maybe even the fleet operator themselves could have some benefit too. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're getting uh, new income streams when, the, when you don't have a transport mission. Um, but you could also, I mean, sort of looking into the future, if you have a standardized system where you could have different um, operators operating the vehicles and when they come to pick up their load, they, they have um, uh, the option of, of uh, extended range uh, electrically, right? So uh, how much is that worth rather than paying for, for diesel for that, uh, for that range? So all, all of a sudden you, you get this added value of having, having a trailer which is electrified. I'm curious, are there any sort of workarounds that you have to do with the solar panels? And, and I'm thinking in terms of like added weight, uh, you know, when any, anybody ever talks about adding something to a vehicle, it's it, it usually efficiency comes into mind. Uh, how much weight are these solar panels adding to the trailer itself? And, you know, have your test gone far enough to see how much of an impact that might have? Right. So uh, that's a very good question. I mean, um, you usually get into those questions uh, immediately. So uh, the solar panels we have on houses, for instance, they have a, an efficiency of around 18 to 20 percent usually, uh, but they're very heavy uh, per square meter uh, or per square foot. And, and uh, that's, that's not an option for vehicles, right? So you want to keep the weight down. And we have a special um, uh, or a lightweight type of solar panel uh, which is uh, which for the whole vehicle uh, weighs about uh, three or four hundred kilos um, for the whole vehicle for these fifteen hundred square feet of, of area. But um, the the downside of that is that you get a little bit lower efficiency. So we have an efficiency of about fifteen percent, um, which is obviously a big drop from these most efficient uh, glass type of solar panels. But um, the weight is, is kept low and, and the, the profile. So we're only adding like a few millimeters of, of extra thickness, you might say, to the to the trailer, um, which is also important for the weights and dimensions regulations. And we've, we've actually tested these um, panels uh, on the road in this pre-study. So one thing that really concerned us was that um, OK, what happens if they break down after two days or you know, a week or two weeks? So we've actually mounted um, like test panels on a vehicle and it's been running for a year and a half now. And uh, we see that it's still functioning. It's still operating uh, without doing anything special to protect them, just you know, the way they come out of the factory. Uh, and they're also giving uh, very similar results as to what the analysis has shown them to do. So all in all, it's a, it's a good start. And then on like the operation side, uh, anything like uh, maintenance in terms of keeping the vehicle clean, the trailer itself clean, uh, does uh, road debris, dirt, that sort of thing impact performance of the, the cells? Yeah, so, so that's exactly what we wanted to try with these uh, test panels. So, so the vehicle has been um, running with three test panels, uh, about a square meter each. And um, it's been running for a year and a half. And it's been, you know, it's been running in normal operations, uh, nothing uh, unusual, uh, just regular operations with uh, washing, you know, regularly, like on a weekly basis or so. And uh, we haven't seen any degradation um, so far. Uh, after a year and a half, which is which has impacted the, the performance um, so to an extent where it sort of deviates a lot from the analysis. So so we're within ten percent of the of the theoretical analysis, 
uh, and that that is also based on on housing so so whereas in in real life uh, operations you have uh, trees next to the roads especially here in sweden you have a lot of forests and, and trees close to the road so that will obviously affect it but we're very close to the simulated results so far and I think in in Europe, there's uh, some new CO2 regulations coming on. That I, if I've got it right, I think it's something like a, need a 15% improvement of the fleet uh, by 2025, and then oh, geez, a 30% reduction uh, 2030 and beyond. Uh, is right. that driving any of uh, what we're seeing here with this technology? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, to to cut that amount of CO2 um, from from a sort of a conventional powertrain with diesel is is extremely difficult. So so the way manufacturers are going about it is to to try and and um, sell more and more fully electric, battery electric vehicles, right? But uh, this is actually, um, I think, a, a quite a an obvious way to do it if if it works out. I mean, if um, if it, it if it turns out to be a good solution technically and commercially then then this is a shortcut to actually achieve those goals so uh but you know there are millions of trailers in europe uh, a lot of them are operating in in uh, southern europe we have a lot more uh, sunshine obviously than in sweden so uh, there the benefits would be even greater so i think i think it's a viable option for sure is that why it makes more sense to say boost the powertrain rather than using the power for something else like a refrigeration unit on the trailer or say the ac inside of the cab right i think uh, both of those examples you mentioned are, are really power hungry devices which uh, benefit equally i would say so um i think i think you can also save diesel and co2 by by uh, powering those electrically uh, but I think it's extra interesting to actually get uh, to be to be able to plug into the powertrain and to to power the vehicle. I mean, um, you know, if you're in the south of Spain, you run out of fuel, then okay, if you have enough time to wait for a few days, you could actually, you know, you'll never run out of fuel basically. So I think I think there's this is a boost, but I mean, those other options are also interesting and then should be should be done as well for sure. Yeah, no, it, it, it's definitely interesting. Uh, I, I'll say I don't think a year has gone by since I started doing this that we haven't seen some sort of announcement about solar panels. And so far, it hasn't really caught on at all. I think, uh, I, I believe the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid may be the only vehicle that you can get that currently uses solar panels. But, you know, as we've been talking about here, it just seems like the environment may have finally flipped that script on solar panels where the drawbacks like cost and weight and other things have finally gone tipped and gone in favor of the benefits of a system like this. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and uh, I mean, you know, looking into the future, I think, um, I think you'll see a similar um, growth as in, as in lithium ion batteries where, where the efficiency goes up and the costs go down. Uh, they become more robust. They perhaps become more optimized for for using uh, for usage in vehicles. Uh, so, so I think there are. I think it's a pretty good uh, future for solar panels on, on vehicles. Uh, looking looking ahead, and also, I mean, if you think about the regulations in Europe, uh, there's discussion of a, a CO2 tax, or um, you know, and in in those cases, we actually start to to pay. For, for CO2 emissions, then this can become a really viable option as, uh, as well. So, so I think there's, um, I think it's, it's a bright future for solar panels. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I, I'm curious, uh, your tests that you have going, uh, do you have further tests going on right now? You, you talked about some that you've already done. Uh, what are you working on right now? Right, so, so basically the, uh, this is a research project and, and we've done a pre-study. Uh, with with uh, good results uh, and and where we tested these sort of limited uh, size panels uh, in real operations, but now we're moving ahead. So in in uh, first of January next year, um, 2021, we will basically kick off this project where we do a full scale test. So we will spend more or less um, eight or nine months building a complete vehicle, uh, equipping it, and um, and so on, building it, and then we will run it in in full operation for a year, and then we will uh, have about three months to um, 
analyze the results and and uh, sort of uh, disseminate the results as well. So so that's the plan to go full scale now. So a year for the test, uh, another three months to kind of break everything down, and then uh, I guess from there you'll decide you'll you'll look at the data and decide what you're going to do from there. I take it. Yeah, sure. Um, exactly. So, so that's the plan. Uh, so one, about almost one year for building the vehicle and then one year for testing and then evaluation. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. I mean, um, Scania is a truck manufacturer. We don't make solar panels. So I think, uh, but we do have those partners in the project. And uh, I, I think we've been getting a lot of attention as well. So uh, I think if it turns out well, it's going to be a lot of interest. And uh, I think we'll... Uh, you know, other manufacturers will probably also start looking at this uh, at this boost in electrical energy that you can actually get. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely an interesting space to keep an eye on. Like I said, you see and hear reports all the time about solar panels, but it may be where we finally reach that environment where they start to make more sense and start to come on a little bit more. So, I wish you guys all the best of luck. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Eric Falkram from Scania. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me.